What's going on, guys? Smartwind.com here. <clears throat> it is January 12th, 2018. Um, so what we're going to go over today is something I do for a lot of clients probably over the past year. Now I've done so much of this that I decided I'm going to start doing more Google Sheet um, builds, which is more ends up being more data management and analysis rather than modeling uh financial scenarios usually and that's because of a few reasons i'll explain but um you know i still i'll still be doing excel models too because not everybody likes google sheets um and there are some things that excel is better at and there's some things that our google sheets are better at so having said that this is going to be featuring a lot of the reasons why people like google sheets um, and why it's, it's pretty powerful when managing a database. So what we have here, there's two, number one, you have to input the data somehow. So you got to have the structured database and it's got to be either you're going to be manually inputting it, which here I've done some drop downs with a validation. And that brings me to the first point is, um, validation ranges will auto update. And they won't show, like in Excel, if you put a range from a number all the way down, it'll show a bunch of blank spaces if you want to capture the whole range, but you might, you don't know how much you're going to fill in of it. With Google Sheets, you can do, see how it says Jim, Ted, Jerry, Bill, it has one, two, there's four there. You see in validation, we got our four. Well, if I just start adding names here, the drop down auto updates for all these and it only shows what's there so that is really nice um, that in itself is is just a, a great feature when doing data entry now the other thing is you can reject input so if somebody's typing in data here and it doesn't match what's in the validation it will actually not even let you do it and that's a setting you could you could adjust or you could not have that you could let it go through if you want but uh, it just helps with uh, errors. Okay, so we've got <clears throat> a, a sample scenario here where we've got a date, we've got salesmen, they're selling some kind of skew with some kind of quantity and dollar value. And then there's some conditions that are tied to each, uh, each transaction. Okay, so we have these conditions and they're all going to be helpful when trying to filter this data. So, um, there's two ways you can get this data into this into a Google Sheet. One is you just have your Google Sheet here. You have uh, people entering this in. You might have this coming through with a formula or something, or it could be manual entry. Um, I just highlighted everything that's a validated uh, drop down. Uh, and then that's it. And you got um, with Google Sheets, the other nice thing is it's a link, so anybody could view it and work on it at the same time possibly if that's necessary so there's another that's a bit of an easier management style than trying to uh, work on an excel sheet because you have to keep sending it back and forth um, so this is nice you can also lock things down so certain emails cannot uh, change certain uh, cells or ranges or, or pages so that's good. Um, the other way is you would actually populate this database with a Google form, and that's basically a uh, drop down or a, a form base where you have you could pick all of these things. You can actually do a validation in a Google form, so you have certain things that can only be picked, or it could be manual entry of whatever. Um, and the user would fill it out, hit submit, and then it automatically fills in a row in a Google Sheet. And then, so then basically you have this database that automatically populates based on a Google form. It's not that hard to uh, um, kind of set up if you just uh, research on YouTube how to do it. It's pretty simple. I can't go through it right now, but it, I mean, just go to google.com slash forms, I think, and then just start setting it up and, and uh, just start adding sections for what you want people to basically each section would be a column in the Google sheet that you're filling out. So anyway, let's just pretend. So we got all this data here. Now we want to report on it and we want it to be pretty automated. So first thing we got is a current month report. 
So this has got um, some filters on it and we're basically only filtering by a salesman, a date range, and a condition one. Now this could be, you could filter on all kinds of conditions. Um, and in target all kinds of things. There's just a lot of a lot of possibilities here for for reporting on this, but I just picked one because you got to pick you know, you gotta pick something to explain the functionality. So this is current month, which means this these dates, which are referencing the validation, will auto update based on the current month. So today's January 12th. It's saying well the first day of the month is 1 1, last is 131. And as we move to Feb, it will automatically update to the correct start date and end date of the month. So your, your current monthly report, you never have to change the dates. You can change these and it will adjust um, what shows in the database. So this is the one huge thing that Excel cannot do. And all I have here, you see none of this is formulas. There's only one formula in here. And that formula will, the filter formula will come in with the Google Sheet. You can have it in your index of, of tools if you end up purchasing this, which I will be offering a uh, download in the description box um, below for a one-time price, uh, probably mid-level, probably a $45 one-time fee. And um, you'll get the formula that does that. But you can see the formula is in there. And as, as I change these conditions, let's change it to green. You see nothing's there for green. Let's go red. So the same bill didn't have any red. Let's see Ted. Ted had two red for the for January. Uh, Jim had one red. Uh, Jerry had one. And so that's nice because now you don't have to drag have a huge formula that drags all the way down and checks all this stuff each one and then populates a row based on it. Instead, you have one formula that checks everything. And then based on the columns meeting this criteria, it reports the entire row. And that's really nice. Uh, super helpful. It, it really cuts a lot of um, redundancy and formula redundancy out of the picture. and makes reporting a lot easier. So that's the current month. Now we also have a dynamic report where you can basically pick any start and end date. And it's going to report. So here we just did the whole year. So let's look at what the whole year looks like. So report on Jim. He had one green one, no blue, three red. We look at Ted here, two red, no blue, one green. Let's go to Bill, one green. Oh, a whole bunch of blue. And no red. So that's nice because now instead of um, like trying to look through this and see what's what, you can easily report and see, okay, yeah, look, he and uh, Bill had a whole bunch of blue here and up here. And these, I'm just using, I mean, the terms could be meaning anything. You could set it to anything. That's why this is uh, such a, a powerful dynamic way to track things and report on things. Uh, Okay, so that's, oh, that's the current months. So there's a dynamic, which allows you to pick, and you could actually, we could add as many criteria as we want or remove some. You could basically report everything that's on a database that says bill or anything that's blue. Um, we're also going to go into some other fields that can be a little bit more complex. So that's uh, a nice, um, really nice formula there. It is a filter formula, and it's, doing multiple conditions on a, a sheet to report on the entire row if certain columns meet the criteria here. And it will just go down forever. So you don't have to mess with uh, any of that. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is the completed tab. So this functionality happens a lot in the database. So you'll have data that comes in and then you'll want to move, you know, sometimes it comes up where you want to move a record if, it, if something happens. So I've actually added a script which if you go to the script editor, when you download this, you'll see it. You'll see the um, the code. But watch this. So we got this record here. Let's look at Ted, January 13, A2, 43, $222. And red, medium, hot, in progress, wool, metal. So how, what if I want to say anything in column I, if it gets changed, to complete, I want the whole row to automatically move. 
So watch this. Put it to complete. There it goes. Row is now gone from here. Move to the completed tab. Now that is really useful. Say, say you want to do it. Uh, this one, gone. This one, gone. So this functionality can be really helpful for tracking things in a pipeline, or just all kinds. And and that helps you. You know, you got your master database, and then that helps you get this data into the into nice clean tabs based on certain things being met or whatever. There's just all kinds of, of use cases here. So I'm just going to put them all in here just to show you. What this looks like. So I've, I've said they're all complete. <coughs> no more left in here. They're now in the completed tab. Now I've added a summary that we're going to do on the completed tab. Um, and you'll see the current month and dynamic report are only reporting on the database. So those aren't going to show no data. So this becomes two pronged. If you do have a setup where you have a database and you have things moving around, then you're reporting here. You're going to target the tab that you want to see. Um, if you don't have a complete tab and you just have one database, then obviously you don't, it doesn't matter. But if we have it here like this with two, you'd have to say, okay, this is current month's report of any data that's in this database, which would mean, let's say that's, um, I don't know, un, in progress. So this would be in progress report current month and in progress report for any uh, time frame. It could be a week, a day, or whatever. And then you could do another one. You could just duplicate these tabs, and then instead of targeting the database in the formula here, and it's only one formula, you can just target the completed tab, and then it'll do the same report, but it'll target this data instead of the database. So that's nice. Now what I want to show you is is this. Now, let's see here. I've made a completed oh need to make the, the validation here so this is going to be unique uh, the unique function is also really nice it's not in Excel you can do unique and get only unique values in a, a given uh, row or a column and that's really good for recording so there we go so now you see this, this is a, a report by salesman per month, and it shows their dollar values that they've made um, that have been completed. So it's not looking at the database when the first comes in. It's only looking at data that has been marked as completed, and then it's reporting here on a monthly basis. Then I add a little chart. You can, sh you can see here all of this. Um, and and this, this could be expanded on. To report all kinds of things, all just there's a lot of dynamic flexibility here with Google Sheets, and it all this reporting is pretty easy. The difficult parts are managing how the database is structured and how it moves around. So let's go ahead and let me undo all of this. So this is back to how it was at the beginning. two more okay so that's cleared out uh, I do need to update this instead of being unique and there I want it to be in the validation okay all right so that's and that's pretty much it so, so this Google sheet it's got some decent structure here it's got some uh, some drop-down logic it's got a script that automatically moves a row to another tab and then it's got the filter formulas that report um, on what your database says and that's pretty much it so this if you just want to play around with this is like I said so just a one-time cost charge $45 I'll send it to you and then the bigger thing is most likely you're gonna want me to try to build something custom for your specific situation and that's where uh, my hourly rate comes in, which is $50 an hour. If you want me to work on whatever you want, you know, get your data set up, uh, figure out the best way to, for data entry and reporting, and how you want things to move, um, 
you know, I can do that. We'll estimate it again as fifty dollars an hour. Um, but I do wait. What I've just showed you is, is involved in so many jobs I can't even tell you that I work on, and um, it's just this is a really a nice way that is user friendly. It's it's not redundant. There's a lot of um, you know it's easily re replicated, updated. And it's got some pretty advanced formulas and scripts. I mean, it's not like, I wouldn't say it's uh, expert level here, but I'd say this is perfect for an intermediate user, for sure. And if they're managing any kind of database. All right. Well, that's all I got for you this Friday. Um, hopefully, it is this ends up being helpful to you. And um, just come over to smarthelping.com if you want to inquire about it. Uh, the links will be in the description box below. Have a great weekend.